Now let's talk about titrations. And there's a couple terms that we want to make sure that you know. And these should have been covered in first semester general chemistry, but it's been a while. So I just want to revisit a couple terms here. So first is the equivalence point, the point at which equivalent moles of acid and base have been added. Um, and the end point is a change in the physical properties of a solution in response to reaching the equivalence point. And it's often a color change for an indicator for acid-base titrations, though it can also be a change in conductivity through a conductometric titration, and it can be a change in pH, um, which is really, as we'll see, a change in the um, uh, uh, voltage um, of or potential called the potentiometric titration. Anyway, there's, there's a couple different options. Um, and uh, before I start tackling C, I want to remind you of something called KW. And KW is, I'll give you the value first, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. It is an equilibrium constant and is the equilibrium constant for the following reaction. So 2H2O goes to uh, hydronium. plus hydroxide. And you can also, oops, uh, I think that's going to be fine anyway. But um, Then uh, it's also, if you take a water away from each side, uh, you can see it as this. And KW can be for either of these reactions, depending upon uh, generally, in first semester general chemistry, we're talking more about this one, which is one water molecule, because we generally talk more about H+. And now that we're doing Bronsted-Lowry theory in second semester general chemistry, we will typically do more with hydronium. But this is the KW for either of those. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we now talk about our first type of titration, which is a strong acid, strong base titration. And... Uh, we're going to do, if you remember these, uh, a bit of chemistry mad libs here. And what I mean by that is I'm going to ask for the name of a strong acid, your favorite strong acid. Uh, it could be only one of seven, remember, that we typically deal with in general chemistry. And uh, I don't know, let's just go with perchloric acid. And uh, your favorite strong base. Yes, I'm hearing uh, potassium hydroxide. And the reason we can do that is because for a strong acid, strong base titrations, it doesn't matter what strong acid or strong base you use. The results and the titration will end up being exactly the same. I mean, it's true that the products will be a little different. Uh, so acid plus base, also from Gen Chem 1, creates water plus salt. So we're going to have H2O. And the salt, remember salt is any soluble ionic compound. Table salt is sodium chloride. Uh, we're going to have, in this particular uh, case, uh, potassium chlor perchlorate. And uh, from first semester general chemistry, we also did uh, total ionic equations and net ionic equations. And uh, we're just going to jump to the net ionic equation. Uh, well, actually, let's let's do it a little differently. So strong acids break up 100% into two ions. Strong bases break up 100% into two ions. Turns out that uh, the K plus and the uh, perchlorate minus will end up being spectator ions, so that's why we're canceling them out. And we end up with uh, either version, so it's going to be H plus plus hydroxide goes to water. And you could also do the version with hydronium here uh, because as we've seen, strong acids, we can also, in a Bronsted-Lowry sense, think of them breaking up into hydronium um, plus 
or chloride ion. Anyway, either way, um, now I want to know the Kc for this reaction. And you'll see that this reaction is a flipped version of this one. When you flip the reactants and products, you invert or reciprocate the K value. So this is going to be 1 over Kw, which is 1.0 times 10 to the plus 14. This reaction goes to completion, very much so. So that's why I can just draw the single arrow there. I did it accidentally, but um, it is true. That's where it goes. So uh, this reaction goes to completion. And our new thing uh, in this um, the uh, last set of lectures in this set is that reactions that go to completion need mole ice tables. Um, so this reaction goes to completion, need mole ice table. Uh, and we do molarity ice tables when K is small or when the reaction doesn't go to completion. Um, and so now let's solve some actual problems here. So it says, what is the pH when 10 milliliters of uh, 10, 20, 30, and 40 milliliters of 0 0.15 molar. Um, oh, we chose um, KOH here, are added to 25.0 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar for chloric acid. And again, we could pick any strong acid and strong base. Um, so what we're gonna do is let's solve first for 10 milliliters of 0 0.15 added to, and let's see if I can do this here, uh, 25 milliliters of 0 0.2. So uh, in order to solve this, let's solve for my moles of perchloric acid first. So I'm gonna move my decimal place three places. This is gonna be 0 0.025, 0 0.025 times 0.2. I get 0 0.00500 moles of HClO4, which breaks up 100% into ions. So it's really the moles of H plus. That's what we're going to use in our ice table. And now we go back to here and we get for the 10 milliliters times the 0.15, so move this, one, two, three, to turn that into liters. I get 0 0.010 times 0 0.15. I get 0 0.00150 moles of KOH, which I will just be taking the moles of hydroxide from that. And now let's set up our mole ice table. And we've got, uh, so H plus, and you could do this with the full acid and base too, but what I like to do is I like to set up my mole ice tables with reactions that I know the KC. And this one we just did. So let's see, I've got uh, ice, I've got 0 0.00500, 0 0.00150, and a liquid. And this is a mole ice table for a reaction that goes to completion. So we're going to find our limiting reactants. All the coefficients are ones in these, so there's nothing fancy to do with that. And my limiting reactant is going to be my hydroxide. So I'm going to subtract that from both. That means that I will have zero hydroxide left and 0 0.00350 moles of my H+. And uh, we're asked for pH. So pH means that I have to find not the moles, but the molarity of my H+, and then plug it into the pH equation. So now I'm going to do a concentration of H+. That's going to be 
uh, my moles. over my liters and my liters here i have uh, 25 milliliters plus 10 that's going to be 35 milliliters which is 0 0.0350 liters and multiplying that out 0 0.0035 divided by 0 0.035 those are nice that's nice math 0 0.100 molar h plus and my ph which is always the negative log of the concentration of H plus or the concentration of uh, hydronium. We have H plus here now, but it's going to be minus log 0 0.100. And I hit my log button and I get uh, 1.00 as my pH for this solution. So that's my final answer here. pHs will always have two decimal places in everything that we do as a safe bet. Um, let's see, I think probably I should have three sig figs here. So, and the way that pHs go is that three sig figs are the decimal places. So if you also add 1.000, I think I should have three sig figs. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. So uh, 1.000, because uh, in pHs, only the decimal places are significant. That would be fine as well. But uh, I don't look for you to do that. I look for you to always do two decimal places for pH. That's what will typically be done in the lab as well. Most pH sensors read to two decimal places, and I think that's just good to do. Oh, and most, oh. Most K values have two decimal places or two sig figs. So it just tends to work better that way. Um, next one we're gonna do is gonna be the 40 milliliter case. So this is going to be 40.0 milliliters of, oops, come back here. I think I'm at the top of the page, there we go. Of uh, 0 0.150 molar potassium hydroxide. And we've still got the same 50 milliliters, ooh, sorry, 25.0 milliliters of 0 0.200 molar perchloric acid. And we know already that the moles of the perchloric acid are going to be the same. That's 0 0.00500. And we're just going to jump straight to H plus. And now we have to multiply for the uh, potassium hydroxide. One, two, three. I have the 0 0.0400 times 0.15. That's going to now be 0 0.00600 moles of hydroxide. And I've chosen this point to make sure that you can see that we've got more hydroxide now, my uh, H plus is going to be my limiting reactant. Let's set up that molewise table. I've got my hydrogen ion plus my hydroxide ion going to H2O. And uh, my Kc is 1.0 times 10 to the plus 14 where I write my plus there, just to be very clear that it is not the minus sign. This is the flip of the KW reaction. I've got ice. I've got 0 0.00500, 0 0.00600, and just my water, which is a liquid. Subtract my smaller number. I am now out of hydrogen ion, right? So it is not going to be an acidic pH. My pH should be higher than seven. So uh, 0 0.00100. So uh, my pH has to be greater than 7.00 because I have excess base. And 
This is something that in my class, we typically do in Gen Chem 1. So this is a bit of review, uh, both of these sets of calculations. We now have our hydroxide ion. We now have our moles of hydroxide. And we have to go ahead and calculate our total volume. So we have here and here. Well, they're in different units, but um, 0 0.040, 0 0.040 plus 0 0.025. I get 0 0.065 liters. And then I can divide those. And I get 0 0.015 moles of, oh, sorry, molarity hydroxide. And uh, so now, since we have hydroxide, we can now find pOH, which is the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide. Well, we'll do it there. And I'm just, uh, well, let me do that again. 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.065. So 0 0.0154 uh, hmm, right, because there should be three sig figs. Anyway, I'm just going to go down to pH uh, with 2.0154 log. I get 1.8 one as my pOH and then my pH will be 14 minus pOH and oh 1.81 I get 12.19 as my pH and that is how you do a strong acid strong base titration calculation for both excess strong acid and excess strong base. And so now if we were to do a pH titration plot for a strong acid, strong base solution, um, it always looks something like this in general. And I just happen to know that the equivalence point um, is actually at 33.3. That's when the moles of acid and the moles of base will be set the same as far as the milliliters of base added. And at um, when you're sketching this out for a strong acid, strong base, pH equals 7.00 at the equivalence point. And the equivalence point is oftentimes referred to as EP, not the endpoint, just the equivalence point. So let's see, at 33.3, we go through 7. Excuse me. 